Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're going to continue our series on the HPE ProLiant DL580 Gen 9 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on memory. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. Tell a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL580 Gen 9 server. Do us a favor, find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, this video will be specifically dedicated towards memory. So what we're gonna do in this video as a whole, we're gonna go over the general specs of the compatible RAM for your DL580 Gen 9 server. The max speeds, the max sizes, which the speeds in particular we're gonna have to highlight because it's very interesting on this machine. And then at the end, we're gonna show you how to physically install them. So let's go ahead and hop in all the fun stuff. All right, let's start with the fun stuff. Let's start with speeds. Speeds is a little bit crazy for the DL580 Gen 9. So for instance, uh, the speed that you can use are the 2133 and the 2400 and that is it and they're not going to run at 2300 or 2133 or 2400 you cannot install 2666 it will not work you cannot install 2933 it will not work and you cannot install 3200 it will not work you definitely have to have the older end of life ram which is going to be the, the 2133 or the 2400 speed and again even with those they're going to clock down if you look at the processor that you have in your system and that is going to be the biggest biggest key to speed here is what proc do you have even the best proc in this series which is the E7-8894 uh, V4, which we have in our series as well in the very uh, first start of the series for CPUs, that is going to clock down to 1866. And that's the best proc in the in the whole uh, machine, in the whole series. So even with the best proc, you're getting relatively DDR3 speed at 1866. And if you fill up the DIMM channels, it could go all the way down to 1600, even 1333. So it's a really interesting machine when it comes to speed because it's a DDR4 box, but it doesn't run at 2133, it doesn't run at 2400, and you can't use any of the newer high-end DDR4 it has to be the older one. So if you go to our site, for instance, and you look at the options for the upgrades, you can see that there's 2133 and 2400, and that's it. You can't get anything else uh, because of this exact issue right here, and the 2666 won't even boot, okay? So now that we've dove in deep to the speeds, I just really wanted to highlight that because that is uh, one of the biggest flaws that we've seen in this machine. Let's talk about sizes. So the sizes you can do, you can do 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig, or all the way up to 128 gig, but there's a trick for the 128 gig, and that brings us to what types of RAM are compatible. Well, you have ECC registered, which is known as an RDIM, and you have load reduced, which is known as an LRDIM. With ECC registered, you can max out using 96 DIMMs, which we should have highlighted earlier that there's 96 DIMMs in this machine, which is pretty insane, but you can put in six terabytes using 96 64 gigs using 2400 speed, but that's gonna clock down anyway, so you might as well just use the 20, 2133, and that's the max six terabytes for ECC registered. Whereas with load reduced, you can get 12 terabytes putting in 96 128 gigabyte DIMMs. And again, it's just gonna clock down. So you might as well use 2133, but realistically, it'll probably be easier to find 2400 speed for those 128 gig DIMMs, okay? All right, now that we know a little bit more about the, the speeds, the sizes, what types of RAM are compatible, let's go ahead and install them. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear. Be right back. All right, so next step, we're gonna go ahead and open the lid right here. So we're just gonna push this in, slide this back, and this will just come straight off. So as you will notice, there are eight risers. It's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can tell you HP is definitely better with numbers than they are with letters, and I'll get to that in a minute, but this is gonna be one through eight. So we're gonna start with the first one. We're just gonna push our blue button, and we are gonna pull out our riser. So now what we're gonna do is open the riser. And in order to do that, we're just gonna take this clip right here and open it up. So now that we have opened it up, uh, you'll see uh, all the dims here. There are uh, 12 dims per riser. Uh, they're color coded based off of the memory channel. So white is the start of the channel. So there are four channels inside each riser. Uh, this is all very important in case you were only, let's just say, putting in four DIMMs per riser. You'd wanna put them into the four white DIMM slots. If you were putting in um, eight DIMMs per riser, we'll show you how to do that as well. Um, and this is why I say HP is better with uh, numbers rather than letters. Um, the way that they, uh, they do this here is based off of letters. So the very, very first channel is gonna be 4A. So that's the first module that you would install is 4A. Then you're gonna swing over here and it's 9B. And then you're gonna come back over here and it's 1C. And you're gonna swing back over here and it's 12D. And then you're gonna come over here and it's 5E. 
8 F 2 G 11 H and this is where I get confused I'm like where's the I and you go over here to 6 J swing back over here to 7 K and then you're going to come back around here to 3 L and then 10 M so that's the proper order of course by that point you're just filling them all up and it doesn't really matter anyways it's more important if you are filling up uh, just four you want to put them in the white or if you're filling up uh, let's just say just eight uh, you'd want to put them into the white and the first black next to the white so that's how you would install them okay uh, so now we know a little bit more about the other uh, channels let's show you how to actually install them so the first thing i like to do is uh, pop open all of my tabs i like everything perfectly open i would also normally do this on a surface uh, or a table that's not going to be sliding around but i'm doing this for the sake of the video here so so we're going to install uh, some uh, memory modules here. So this is going to be the DIMM that we're going to install first. So I wanted to point out that there's a key right here. Uh, this key or this notch in the middle of the leads is not perfectly centered. So you do need to make sure that your module faced the proper way because if it's not faced the proper way, it'll be off just so slightly and you could potentially damage the leads or you could potentially damage the DIMM slot itself. Neither are a situation you want to be in. So we're just going to slide this right in. And so the next thing I always want to note is you need to hear these two clicks. And the first one was kind of quiet, but uh, the click right here is the tab hooking to the side of the module, pulling it down to make sure that you have a fully good connection with all the leads into the slot itself. So now we're going to come over here. This is the next DIMM slot that we're going to install into. You just want to hear those clicks, make sure you have firm connections. And I really do stress the clicks because, and not necessarily the noise, but just making sure that your tab is fully in because that is the number one user error that we run into is someone thinks that they have a bad memory module and really they just need to make sure that the module is fully seated. We tell people to rotate your modules around and one, this will either make you figure out if it's a bad uh, module or a bad dim slot, uh, but this is how we always tell people to, uh, to troubleshoot. So this would be the first four. Now again, and if we were going to install eight and I do recommend doing it in sets of four so four eight and twelve so that way you have a nice balance across your entire uh, channels or across all the channels and you, that's what you're really shooting for is a nice even distribution across all the channels so that uh, no channels happen to do more work than the others and basically just a nice balanced performance. And that's how you maximize your overall performance is by utilizing your channels. All right, so this would be uh, the perfect setup for eight. So just for the sake of time, I'm gonna go ahead and load the rest and fast forward. All right, so now I have all 12 modules installed. So one thing I always like to do is double check all your tabs make sure like actually this one right here this last one you see it it is slightly out and that would register as a bad module as little as that is so we're just going to make sure that that clips in we'll double check the rest and that's exactly why i always double check it because it was so hard to tell it was just very very slight but that will be the difference of it registering as a good module or a bad module so all right now we're going to go ahead and install this back in so i'm going to open this back up I always like to close it just to keep everything flush while we're working on it. But we're going to go ahead and just close this up right here. All right, now that we've got it firmly closed, we're just going to go ahead and slide this in. And actually, one thing that's important to note, this little blue flap right here, you need to make sure it is closed right here. So you're physically going to need to put it shut and then you want to take the two PCBs and you want to slide them into the two grooves. It's not a really great design to be quite honest. I'm not a fan of it, uh, but that is how you're going to want to do it. So let's go ahead and move this back. Let's get our PCBs lined up and then just slide this straight down once you got everything lined up. And then we're just going to simply close this and click it back into place. Now rinse it, recycle, repeat for seven more times, and you're going to get a ton of RAM in this machine. Again, you can get up to 12 terabytes, which does make this a pretty powerful box 
uh, for very inexpensive, to be quite honest, for uh, what that would cost for a brand new box nowadays. So, all right, now that we made it this far, hey, if you're still watching, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built servers, whether that's a DL580 Gen 9 or any other HPE, Dell, Supermicro, Lenovo, Cisco, we do new and we do use. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Take care.